In this video, I'm going to be revealing how much money can you really make in real estate. You want to stick around because at the end, I'm also going to give you some tips on how to actually get started in real estate to achieve your goal. The thing is that how can I answer your question so that it makes sense? You know, obviously you can make a lot of money in real estate, but can you make a lot of money in real estate is the real question. And how much money can that be? How much money do you need? Let me start by saying that according to Forbes, a third of the world's billionaires made their fortune in real estate. So that should tell you something about the ability for real estate to actually create wealth. Following real estate is high tech, which is something that we keep proponent thinking that high tech is one of the best ways to achieve uh, wealth, but it's actually number four after real estate. The number one is finance and investment, and number two is actually retail and fashion. So these are the, the four top position of where the world's millionaires have made their fortune. So how much money can you make in real estate? Well, apparently you can make billions. The number one real estate billionaires had a wealth of about $38 billion last year. But do you need to make billions? Do you need to make millions of dollars a year? How much do you really need to make? Let's keep our goals realistic. Yes, you can go for the sky and the pie in the sky, but really let's be realistic and start with something first. Because most people just want to retire early, achieve financial freedom. Most people don't want to be multi-billionaires. But if the question is, can I make $100,000 a year in passive income using real estate? The answer is absolutely yes. Can you make 200, 300? Yes. Here's why real estate is such a great investment to build wealth, build passive income, build multi-generational wealth, also wealth for your kids and grandkids. First, it's easy to understand and I think this is one of the reasons why people think that oh, I have to go into high tech or I have to go in some kind of finance or something like that to make a lot of money. And then they kind of disregard real estate um, because it's kind of like too simple, it's, uh, it's kind of an old industry maybe. You know, don't disregard it. This is a, it's true, it is an old industry, but it's also something that is uh, constantly innovating as well. But remember that your goal is to achieve financial freedom, build wealth for your kids and grandkids. So. Do you care really that it's an older industry versus like a high-tech, super innovative industry? You probably don't and you probably shouldn't. So again, this is what I like about real estate. This is simple to understand. You have a building, you rent it out or you have a building, you add value, you fix it up and you sell it at a higher value. If you compare that to finance or the stock market, they have a lot of different investment vehicles that are very complex, that are not as easily understood and uh, that means that you potentially put your wealth and your money at risk when you are in these types of investments. Second reason why I like real estate is that it's easy to get started. If you don't have a lot of money, uh, you know, it's a little bit harder, obviously. You have to find some investment, real estate investment that make it easy. If you do wholesaling, for example, so that you can build some capital to get started. If you have a little bit of money, it's just very easy to get started. You don't need a license. You don't need any kind of special, uh, you know, special knowledge or stuff like that to get going. So this makes it very easy to get started. My opinion, real estate is really the great equalizer. Anybody can play this game, anybody can get involved. There's a vast array of investment strategy in real estate and you can always find something that's gonna fit your lifestyle, your time commitment, and the resources that are available to you, including money, for example. The third important reason why real estate is such a great um, business is leverage. There are not too many businesses out there where you can use leverage. And leverage is the ability, for example, to put a percentage of the value of the uh, of 
the value of a property or the value of an asset and have complete control over that particular asset. So that means that putting 20% down payment on a house, get a mortgage for the, the rest, 80%, but you're controlling the whole 100% of the house. You get 100% of the rent. You get, you know, all, all of that. This helps with the cash flow because now instead of having one house, you can have five houses, but also it's going to help appreciation and wealth building because now you have five houses that are appreciating instead of only one. There are some ways to leverage in other asset categories, like even the stock market. You can have a margin account, but typically it's a one, it's a one to one kind of matching on the margin account. And the reason for this is that real estate is a, is a hard, is considered a hard asset. It's something that's really tangible that you, uh, and that you can control and that has an intrinsic value. Uh, so this is one of the reasons why you're able to leverage it a little bit more. There are other asset categories also, like I believe in com commodities and uh, foreign exchange where you can also have a little bit more leverage in stock. But again, this requires a lot of knowledge. It's not as easy to get into these kinds of businesses and these kinds of investment strategies unless you have the skills and capabilities to do so. Real estate, very easy and you have great leverage, five to one leverage. The fourth reason why real estate is good is partnership. If you don't have the money that you need, I mean, when we look at your resources, do you have the time, to, that uh, commitment to perform and to invest in that particular strategy? Do you have the capabilities, the skills to, um, to invest in that particular real estate strategy? Do you have the money? Uh, to do it. So all these three components of resources that you need to be successful in a given uh, real estate strategy or any strategy for that matter uh, is very important. What is so good about real estate is that you can also easily partner with other people. You can do joint ventures to basically go together and partner on a particular project. You can also uh, have hard money lenders and private money lenders lend you money at a specific rate, they, they become the bank. Because sometimes it's very hard to get money from the bank, but there are a lot of other people out there that are willing to lend you money for your projects. If you can find a deal, uh, there are all kinds of other ways as well where you could be, uh, especially in, uh, in the commercial space, if you can find the right deal and you bring it to the right people, they will cut you into these opportunities uh, to make it worth the while. You have other industries that have that partnership kind of uh, capability, but it's very rare. You, you, you're not going to have, for example, a high tech is a good example of that where you have these venture capitalists. But the thing is that these groups, they're very limited and they have very stringent criteria. Most of the opportunities, the deals that they see during the day, they're not gonna invest in. As opposed to real estate, we have a much higher percentage of finding an investors to help us with our deal and then find the right thing. Again, part of it is that this real estate is a hard asset. When you invest, if I'm a private money lender or a joint venturer, I invest in the project, I have a lien on the property, I have part ownership maybe on the property. So that helps me secure my assets. If I'm investing in someone's idea in high tech, I really have nothing, nothing to, uh, to hang my hat on if, uh, if they decide to, uh, to leave. So this is something that's, uh, again, because it's a hard asset, it makes it a little bit easier to find partners as well. One of my absolute favorite is, of course, tax benefits. There's a lot of tax advantages in real estate. Obviously, you have all the tax deductions that you can imagine, but you also have depreciation that can be uh, very valuable, uh, especially if you go into the commercial space as well. Um, so this is something to, to consider. But even as your properties appreciate, uh, you want to resell the property, you capture, you have some capital gains. There are other mechanisms even to not pay the capital gains tax or defer the payment of the capital gains tax. Obviously, everybody heard about the 1031 exchange. People may have heard about opportunity zones. Uh, there are also installment sales. There's, uh, there's also endowment plans. There's all kinds of different methods where you can shelter your money and avoid the capital gains tax. 
And finally, something that's very critical is about determining the value. When we're talking about the stock market, the value of the stock is not really determined by you. Yes, you are kind of a contributor to the supply and demand of that particular stock with your bid and ask, but in reality, you don't affect the market. When you're looking at real estate and a piece of property, determining its value on the market is a little bit uh, easier to figure out and you have the ability to negotiate a little bit better to get the better price possible. For example, if you have a single family house, all the residential property, the value are calculated based on comparable sales. So they look at sales of similar homes close by that have sold in the last six months and that determines kind of what you can expect for that particular property. You can still negotiate up and down um, to get the price that you want, if you want to wait longer and stuff like that. But really, this is the value, how, how the value is calculated in, uh, in the residential space. In the commercial space, the value of the building is determined by two factor, the net operating income, and the cap rate. The cap rate is normally calculated by the net operating income divided by the value of the building, but when you're looking at the cap rate in terms of the market, it's really about the quality of the revenue in that particular neighborhood. Also kind of factor in whether the building has been recently renovated and all of that. So they're comparing the cap rate of all similar buildings in the area and uh, other factors and then they're looking at the net operating income and that gives you the commercial value of that building. So this is very interesting because you can dramatically increase the value of your building uh, by improving your net operating income. So as promised, I'm gonna tell you kind of like how, how do you make money in real estate? Where is the money in real estate? At its most basic level, the real money in real estate is made by developing a property to the highest and best value that you can get for that property. And determining that value, determining that highest and best use is really depending a lot on your knowledge, your skills and your capabilities. Who do you have on your team and stuff like that and what you're interested in. So as an example, when you're looking at a piece of land, people may have different perspective, different point of view of what they can do with that piece of land. One of them might say, oh, this is a great, uh, a great piece of land. I can sell it as a, a park or uh, something like that. And they would see the value of the land as being, let's say, $10,000, right? You would have another, another investor who would look at that same piece of land that um, they have a contractor uh, on board on their team and they say, hey, we can build a house and we can sell that house and make $80,000 profit. I'm going to put $10,000 in to buy the land and I'll pay the cost for the construction and all of that. I'll make $80,000 profit. So that's eight times the amount of money that you put in. So that's a significant profit, a significant return on your cash. You may have another investor that is looking at it and look at the, uh, the zoning and knows that this is a commercial zoning, for example, or, or something for a multi-family uh, unit and the, the lot is big enough and they decide, he decides to build a four unit or a six unit apartment building on that same piece of land. He knows that he has more knowledge about the zoning. He know he has more capabilities in terms of building a six unit apartment building, etc. Now he's able not only to do, uh, he can make a much bigger profit. Maybe he can make a $400,000 profit on that $10,000 investment when he buys that particular property. And that would be you know, a much higher return. So depending on your point of view, what you can do with the highest and the best use for that particular property, how much money you have, how much time, who's on your team and all of that, that makes a big difference into what you see in the value. And this is really the best thing about, uh, about real estate is that um, you can really kind of uh, figure out what is the highest and best use and then develop that property to its maximum maximum value and this is how you really make money in uh, in real estate when you do these kinds of investments though this is not passive income so this is definitely active income investment so you have to put all of that together you have to put the team together and uh, and find the investment and design what is that highest and best use 
Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something about how to make money in real estate. And uh, if you like it, make sure you click the thumbs up. Uh, that really helps with the YouTube algorithm to uh, spread out this video to a broader audience. If you like real estate investing, if you like entrepreneurship, investment in general, financial freedom, make sure you watch the other videos on my channel. Uh, make sure that you subscribe and also click that notification bell so that you are notified whenever a new video is published. Thank you very much.